Hello there YouTube, it's Ro here. Thank you for visiting You Grow Ro. If this is your first time here, I hope you'll consider subscribing at the end of this video. If you've been here before, thank you so much for coming back, I appreciate you. Today I'm gonna give you an in-depth look at what's growing in my two bucket gardens in just a moment. All right, friends, thank you for visiting me in my garden today. We're gonna to be talking about what's growing in my two, more, or, uh, two bucket gardens. And um, I'm gonna show you, well, I wanna start with what a bucket garden is. It's basically a standalone structure that holds five gallon buckets. I suppose you could do it with like one gallon or two gallon buckets, but both of mine hold five gallon buckets. They're generally made out of wood and homemade also both of mine are uh homemade by gentlemen nearby i did not commission these i bought them both at separate times from different people um from off of a facebook marketplace now before i had my bucket gardens i had been growing out of five gallon buckets almost exclusively at the time i was living in an apartment i have my own home now but I was living in an apartment that was downtown Akron and it was all concrete. There was no dirt around. And so I was growing in containers, but mostly um, old five gallon pickle buckets from a local restaurant to me, a sandwich type shop, deli type thing. And um, that was what I grew in almost exclusively. So whenever I moved here, I did start growing in ground. I kept a few of my um, uh, containers and a couple of buckets, but not a whole lot. You know, I thought I was gonna, that was, I was done with that part of my gardening. And um, what you know, that first uh, six bucket garden came up and I thought, you know, that looks great. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try because I'm already accustomed to growing in five gallon buckets. Um, the benefits of growing in buckets, and there are some. One, you get it off the ground, so it's not in ground. If you have issues with rodents, um, you know, groundhogs, bunnies, um, squirrels, possums, things like that, uh, five gallon buckets could be your answer. Also, uh, if you don't have, if you were in a situation like I was in where I didn't have anywhere to grow anything in ground, it obviously gave you places, space uh, and soil in order to grow whatever it is that you wanted to do as long as you had the space for the buckets. Now, in my little animal kingdom over here, I haven't had a whole lot of issues with the squirrels or the groundhogs or the bunnies um, or even the birds for that matter. I've, I've, I've had some, I'm not saying I haven't had any but not much, not, not anything that I would complain about. Matter of fact, I think that damage from the animals rarely makes it into my videos because it rarely happens. But um, the downfall with um, bucket gardens, and uh, I think this is the biggest thing, is that it requires a lot more watering than say something in ground or raised bed because your buckets do have to have drainage on them. I'm just watching all my birds, they're flying around. They're so used to me anymore, it's so cool. Um, but they have to have drainage. And so, um, especially where I have my sitting in six to eight hours of sun, they are needing water probably every other day. And we are in the heat of summer, so it's August, the first week of August. And I probably water these every other day with the hose. Um, you could put them on drip irrigation and then, you know, completely eliminate that um, problem with some timing. But I don't have that option right now. I do have the option. I just haven't gotten it put together. And it's looking like it won't get put together until next year. But it's not a big deal because I enjoy coming out here at the moment. You can grow all sorts of things in the... Um, buckets, the five gallon buckets, you could grow peppers, you could grow 
tomatoes, you could grow collards, all kinds of greens. Um, you could grow ground cherries, you could grow uh, horseradish, you could grow eggplants. I mean, I've even, I'm, right now I even, well, you'll find out, right now I even have watermelons growing in here. I've grown pumpkins in them. I've grown peas, carrots. I've grown carrots very successfully in them. I've grown onions, I've grown garlic. Um, you can grow any number of things in these. That's five gallons of soil isn't a huge issue for most vegetables. So you do have that um, variety available to you. All right, so let's walk over here to my six bucket garden and I'll show you specifically what's growing in it. So right now I am growing uh, bell peppers, different varieties, and uh, tomatoes in this six bucket garden. So I don't have these filled all the way up either. They're about three quarters of the way full. They have very large holes on the bottom so that they can drain out. No water is stagnant and sitting in there. I don't have any mulch over them right now, especially not these. It really doesn't need it because the foliage is so dense on my peppers at this point that it's somewhat protecting what's going on in there. Specifically, this is the Purple Beauty Bell Pepper. And here I have the King of the North Improved Bell Pepper here. In this one, I have Oh, a yellow monster bell pepper. That one is a red night hybrid pepper. Here I have the rebel starfighter prime tomato. Got planted real late. That's why it's so small. Um, but I, I had the plants and I didn't have any more peppers to put in it. So... You know, I just said, hey, I'm going to throw them in there. And then this one is the Jarson One Tricolor Tomato, which I'm really excited about. If I could just get a couple of fruits from that one so I can get some seeds off, oh, that would rock my world. High, high, high acclaim on that tomato. At any rate, um, so this one is a purple bell pepper. I've harvested quite a bit off of this. And in fact, in my last harvest video, you'll see how much I'm getting off of this one. Lots of uh, flowers coming in, very healthy foliage, very dense. I did top some of my peppers and some I didn't. Um, this one here, we have some flowers coming in, also looking very healthy. We even have some nice sized fruits starting down here. And with two months left in my growing season, I think I should get some decent fruits off of that. Uh, now this one is the yellow monster. It's supposed to be like as big as my hand, bigger, bigger, just a mammoth pepper. Um, I'm seeing fruits beginning. And, you know, one there. And I saw another one here. And there's a decent one there. So I have fruits beginning on this, but it's not very far yet. However, the plant looks great. It's very healthy. And I'm not terribly worried about it, but two months isn't a lot of time. So uh, we'll see what happens. Um, then here for this Red Knight Hybrid, I do have some tomatoes coming in. I see a little bit of sun issue on this one and probably some beetle damage this looks like to me. I've been battling the uh, Japanese beetles all over my garden. And uh, so I'm guessing that's who's eating these leaves here. But lots of fruit coming in on that as well. Now for these tomatoes, like I said, these got planted really late. And 
we do see some fruits, some uh, flowers coming in on this. I was really excited about this one because it's one, gorgeous, and it's part of the Star Wars collection. I was, I had all kinds, if you've been watching my channel, I've been doing all types of videos on all the type of specialty tomatoes that I was planning on growing this year. And I'm glad that's one of them that made it. The Jarson is another one that's super special. Um, I'm part of the Tomato Lovers Collective on Facebook. It's a group, it's free. Join it if you're obsessed with tomatoes. Thank me later. Uh, but everyone who has been growing this one, if you got seeds, I got the seeds from the uh, one of the mods, well, founders of the group. And uh, she sent them to me for the Jarson one. It's the tricolor. And I think, I wanna say it's an ox heart. But oh my goodness, is it gorgeous. And they just rave, I mean rave about the flavor of this tomato. So I'm, I'm excited to see some uh, flowers coming in. I don't see a lot of them, but I do see some flowers happening in here. And all I want is two. One that I could eat flat out and one that I can save seeds from. That's all I'm expecting from either one of these. Oh, cross our fingers, cross our fingers, guys. So that's my six bucket. Bucket garden. Doing great right here. Last year I grew tomatoes in it and they did just okay. I kind of figured the peppers would do better because they would like that afternoon, late afternoon sun or uh, shade. And I was right, these are doing great. So that's what I'll be doing in these buckets from now on during the summer. Cause I don't plan on moving this unit. I like where it's at. We don't use this garage door. Well, actually it's off the hinge, so it doesn't work anyways. And until I can get that fixed, this is perfectly fine where it's at. While I'm out here, I'm just gonna snag these few fruits that I'm seeing that have some color. Um, this year I've been picking them just when they start flowering. I'm sorry, start to blush. And then I ripen them in the sun, in the house or outside, doesn't matter. But I don't leave them on the plant because this year um, is the first year that I am majorly dealing with uh, hornworms. And um, they've done quite a number on my cherry tomatoes. Not so much my larger tomatoes, but like my Romas. See here. Hornworm damage. Hornworm damage. And hornworm poop. Um, I recently, this past weekend, I found four of them just on my green stalks alone. And I know they're in this bed, obviously. I just showed you damage from them, but I haven't been able to find them. You can make that situation easier on yourself by buying a uh, black light and coming out at night and finding them. But I have yet to do that and I don't know what I'm waiting on. Uh, let's see. Thought I saw somebody else blushing. Yeah. This one. And we'll leave that one. Oh, speaking of hornworms. My goodness. Found ya. Not to deviate any more than I already have, but I just recorded a video about how I deal with... See, my squirrels aren't even scared of me. Um, how I deal with hornworms. I just cut the whole branch off. I don't touch them. You could totally just peel it off, pull it off, but they be holding on like the dickens and I'm always scared I'm gonna squish it in my hand and it, oh my God, you wanna talk about trauma. It would just be too much for me. So the way that I deal with it is I cut the whole branch off. I don't care where it's at, even if I have to top my plant and then I feed it to the birds. <laughs> You're welcome, guys. Hun uh, hornworms are some hungry, hungry hippos, let me tell you. Uh, and they can be hard to find, but I've been catching them one by one. You know, I've, I've been finding them. Luckily, yesterday, matter of fact, I was recording a video and, um, oh, is this one blushing? 
Yeah, we'll let this blush a little more. There's one in there. I don't feel like digging for it. Um, I have recorded a video uh, down out here, and I was going. I went upstairs to my office, which is right there. I went upstairs to my office and was editing the video. And while I'm editing the video, I see this hornworm that was right in my face. I don't know how I missed it. It was right there. But I saw it on the video and I'm like, ah, I got to go get that thing. <laughs> sure enough, when I came down, it was still in the same place, eating the same pepper plant. It was eating the leaves on my pepper plant. Uh, yeah, so I've been getting lucky this the past two weeks I've been finding them here and there <clears throat> um, without trying too hard but uh, I'll let that one go a little bit more but the, they are they are hard to find um, when they're in and especially when the foliage is dense like this now you'll know they're there because they'll be cleaning off you know whole stems it doesn't look like there's any in this bed but i do see two fruits over here Let's go try. oh there is one over here see and this is why I, I get so mad at myself because i never wear i shouldn't say never but i always forget to wear gloves in the garden and i just don't want to slip up and touch one i'd lose my mind <laughs> so that one's blushing I think yeah the one above it was blushing as well Let's see if I can't get to that one oh the hornworm beat me to it that my friends is hornworm poop Yeah, there's one over here somewhere. I don't see it though. Well, got those couple little buggers, but maybe I should buy a black light and come out here and we can go hornworm hunting, huh? <laughs> Moving on, here is my other bucket garden. It has three levels. Each level has three buckets in it, five gallons. On the side here, it has three rail planters. And then at the top there is one and two upside down tomato planters. Now the gentleman who had this, he uh, was growing, he only grew in, grew in it for one year. Let me show you. It, has wheels though and they lock he brought it over on his truck flatbread flatbread flatbed excuse me and uh, the buckets all have holes in the bottom um, he also included this trellis and those two ladder type trellises um, he included those side baskets as well he also included those tomato hangers uh, and I think I got this one for a hundred bucks. Um, and he delivered it for free. That was crazy. It was an older gentleman, very jovial. He was glad to get it off his hands, but he decided he wanted to grow in ground. So, you know, his decision, my gain. <laughs> so uh, I'm excited about what's in here. So this plant is the Lolac Long Keeper. Now, I've mentioned long keepers a couple of times in some of my videos, particularly the ones that involve me talking about the tomatoes that I'm growing. But essentially what a long keeper is, is a tomato that largely grown in areas like Italy and whatnot that have that type of Mediterranean uh, temperature, uh, weather, climate. And um, these are ones that you harvest at the end of the season and they will stay they will keep, hence the long keeper, for two, three, six, nine months. 
different varieties for will we'll keep for a different amount of time. The Lolek is one of the ones that is supposed to be one of the longer storing tomatoes. So basically I'm going to harvest these and I'm gonna leave them in a flat in a not all stacked together like in one flat row in some place uh, cool and dark and just harvest them as I need them. They will ripen from the inside out. So these are really interesting because they have a yellow skin, but a red flesh. Very beautiful, supposedly very tasty. Um, and then here I have the a tag in this one. Let's see if we can see. Oh, there is a tag. Nope, that is not what that is. Oh, this is the Prairie Fire. This one was released by uh, Baker Creek. It's a beautiful tomato. Um, and it's supposed to be one of the sweetest tomatoes they've ever tasted. I was very interested in getting my hands on that one. And then this one, ooh, this one is the Aftershock. It's a dwarf plant. It's a specialty variety. And if I recall correctly, this one is a tricolor as well. It's like a lime green, a pink, and an orange, I wanna say. I don't know, it's gorgeous. So I'm looking forward to that. Then in this small container here, I have the Candy Berry. Now, Mrs. Tomato Head, she has a channel called Mrs. and Mr. Tomato Head. She said that this was one of the best tasting micro dwarf tomatoes she'd ever had. So of course I got seeds for that. Not seeing any fruit yet, but my lawn keeper has given me fruit so far. Nothing that I've harvested yet. And nothing on my aftershock yet, but it's coming. I, these plants are in good shape. They're much further along than those two, the Rebel Alliance and the other that I showed you in the other bucket garden. Right here is supposed to be a tumbling tiger. That doesn't look like it's a tumbling tomato plant, does it? <laughs> so I'm guessing I switched up my tags somewhere. Surprise, surprise. And then behind that, in the other hanger is mint might be mojito mint i can't remember which one it is i ended up getting a couple of different ones this year so i'm really excited about that and i thought you know if that goes to seed back here and takes over whatever this stuff is i don't care i don't care so let it do its thing i'm letting it seed i'm letting it flower and so be it now in this container is a tomato called the copperhead another stunner it is a dwarf tomato and i am seeing fruits on it and lots of flowers coming in the reason i wanted to do so many dwarfs was because i don't want to have to especially in this one since it's got three tiers I don't want to have an indeterminate tomato that I can't reach and I can't stake in, in this bucket garden. So I tried to keep all of these um, these tomatoes or anything in here, uh, a dwarf variety and, and not indeterminate. So the Copperhead, looking forward to that one. This one is another uh, Star Wars variety called the Rebel Alliance and it has plenty of fruits coming in on it many flowers all of my bucket gardens are getting watered probably every other day well all of you mean two my two bucket gardens are getting watered every other day and they are getting um, fertilizer every Sunday so whether that be um, fish emulsion. I think last week I did blood meal, maybe? Blood meal, bone meal, something like that. But once a week they get some kind of fertilizer. 
Then behind in the third row, that first bucket is um, crimson, sweet watermelon. Not looking super great. I think it's that soil because I have the same thing over here in this bucket. This one's looking a little bit better, but it's the same type of soil and neither one of those are doing especially well. So I think it's the soil that's in there. And then in the back there is a tomato that I don't know what it is. I forget. There's a tag in there, but I'm not walking back there right now with no shoes on. There's a lot of rocks back there. Now in this hanging tomato planter, this is the Shimo Fury Knot. So Shimo Fury is a variegated variety. Look at those gorgeous leaves. And the knot, N-O-T, is because the regular Simo Fury has, well, see, I don't know. The regular Simo Fury has a pointed end. This one is not supposed to. Well, see, what's interesting is that one has a pointed end, but the others don't. So this is, I definitely bought those from a vendor, so maybe there's you know a couple variances in the in the plant but this is the shimo fury knot so it's not supposed to have the pointed end although that one tomato does it's gorgeous though and i believe that is a dwarf variety as well then over here is the ananas noir I don't believe this one is a dwarf, but it was a tomato that I had and I stuck it in there. I've been looking forward to this tomato for years. Unfortunately, I don't see any fruits on it yet, but there is still time. This is also not my only Ananas Noir on the property either. I have one in an in-ground bed and I'm hopefully that one has some fruits on it. All right, friends, I hope you enjoyed seeing what I was growing, what I have growing in my two bucket gardens. I hope I answered any questions you might have. Um, if you would like to see a bigger breakdown, maybe one day I can put some shoes on and go in the back so you can see that from the back because this one actually has um, a, two storage shelves built into the back as well. It not only has wheels, but it has two storage shelves in the back. Um, so. If you'd like to see a more in-depth look at that, let me know and I'll see what I can do. And uh, before I forget, let me head up here to the deck and grab those tomatoes that we harvested. So here's the tomatoes we just harvested, the ones that I found that were blushing. Um, I put them in my window, but I also just set them out in the yard <laughs> in sunny areas. like these here and our nights are getting into the top to mid 60s so uh, no chance of them freezing or anything and the squirrels even though I know they get up here birds are up here as well they are not bothering um, they are not bothering these fruits at all. I hope I didn't jinx myself by saying that, but they're not bothering them at all. These are up here ripening very nicely. Okay. That about does it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you have any further questions, do let me know. I will do my best to answer them, and I will see you guys in another video on another day. Until then, Happy growing, my friends.